Hey y'all, Pokemon Crystal using only one mill tank was a cheesy good time. So let's follow that up with a Pokemon run that is sure to slap. This week, let's see if we can beat Pokemon Red using only one Mankey. As usual, the rules are I can only use Mankey in battle and I can't use any items in battle. By the way, if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and check out more of the videos on my channel. Mankey is a Pokemon best known for being introduced in the same episode where Brock proclaims his love of jelly donuts. In terms of viability though, Mankey is an interesting case. Its attack and speed are pretty decent, but the HP, defense, and special are all complete buns. So we've got ourselves a glass cannon situation. Dig and Rock Slide are great coverage together, which we'll need considering Submission is our best fighting move and recoil damage is not going to do us any favors. I'm interested to see what this little critter can do, so no more monkeying around. Off at Professor Oak's lab, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Squirtle with Mankey so that our rival will pick Bulbasaur. Mankey will have moves to hit both Charizard and Blastoise for super effective damage, so I want the rival to have a Venusaur at the end of this just to make things harder. Mankey is a karate chopping pig monkey Pokemon, so I nickname ours Pork Chop. <laughs> Mankey starts off with just Scratch and Leer. Our decent attack stat lets us prevail against our herbaceous enemy, but you can already see how frail Mankey is. Bulbasaur's attack is lower, but so is our defense, so our Scratch does the same damage as our tackle. Oh man, I can already foresee the Psychic Gym being a nightmare. Hey, speaking of gyms, we reach Pewter City to take on Brock for our first gym badge. But we're just too frail, and we deal very little damage with our resistant Scratch. Brock's rocks are just too hard for our little monkey. Luckily, with just a few extra levels, we reach level 15, where Mankey learns Karate Chop. It's weirdly a normal type move in this game, despite being a fighting type move in future generations. More importantly though, Karate Chop is a high critical hit ratio move, and since critical hits are proportional to base speed in this game, Mankey's Karate Chop will always critical hit. Which ignores Brock's resistance to normal moves as well as bypassing Geodude's defense curls. Interestingly enough, if we get enough Leers in, our Scratches will actually do more damage than Karate Chop. Here's the formula for the damage multiplier for critical hits, where L is equal to the level of your Pokemon. For a level 15 Mankey, our critical hits do 175% more damage. Which is great, but with 3 Leers, Scratch actually does more than a critical hit Karate Chop. This is a good time to point out that critical hits ignore all stat buffs, including the ones we want to use. After traversing Mount Moon, we head to take on the rival Bubs in Cerulean City. The good news is that for once, he's not so much of a struggle, even with Pudgeotto lowering our accuracy with Sand Attack. Critical Hit Karate Chop at this level is even stronger than Body Slam would be, and just remember how strong that move has been in so many of our challenge runs. I'm surprised with how Mankey is performing thus far. Our Pork Chop strategy is infallible. With Bub swiftly beaten by our Monkey Chop, I head to the Cerulean City Gym to take on the Water Gym Leader Misty. This is the battle where the difficulty starts to ramp up. Misty smacks us around with her Starfish, and our low special means we take a ton of damage from her Water-type attacks. Seismic Toss helps to bypass her use of X-Defense, and after a little bit of Bubble Trouble, we walk away with the Cascade Badge. Aboard the SSN, it's time to take on the Rival Bubs once again. On the boat, we picked up the TM for Body Slam and taught it to Mankey. And you might be thinking, oh, don't you want to keep Karate Chop for the critical hits? Well, I'm starting to notice that our monkey is a little squishy, and I value the chance that Body Slam offers to prevent the opponent from attacking more than I do dealing an extra 5% of damage. Thankfully, we outspeed the Kadabra, otherwise, confusion would be bad. But next up is Lieutenant Surge, and this one turned out better than it honestly could have. Our low special means Raichu's Thunderbolt could take us out, especially with a critical hit. So I was worried that Surge was going to go full Peter Gabriel and shock the monkey, but instead, Porkchop dug its diggy hole and made quick work of Surge's team. Okay, so up next is the rival battle with Bubs in the Lavender Town Pokemon Tower, and this is where we really start to see the problem with trying to win a battle with a glass cannon. Bubs is starting to fill out his team with more evolved Pokemon, and Mankey is winning less and less damage trades. Gyarados in particular is a problem. I don't know why this thing has Hydro Pump at this level, but it wrecks our little pork chop. Luckily, we can reset until Gyarados goes for other moves, but the difficulty is starting to creep in. Nothing illustrates our lack of bulk more than the fact that when we take on Giovanni in the Team Rocket Game Corner hideout, I'm actually concerned about losing. 
Onyx and Rhyhorn don't do too much, but Kangaskhan Comet punches my monkey harder than the IRS punched my savings account this year. Seismic Toss really helped us out here because Kangaskhan is very bulky, and I'm really starting to worry when Giovanni is a problem. I wanted to take on Erica next, but Victory Bell's Razor Leaf is just way too strong, so I thought I'd take on Koga. But I don't even get there because there's a mandatory juggler that has psychic types, and their psychic type moves wreck us. Yikes. Looks like uh, we just got juggled, y'all. After finally getting past the jugglers to take on Koga, we got bopped. So back to take on Erica at level 40. We're finally strong enough to deal with the Victory Bell in a timely manner, but we're still struggling to take down the Vile Plume. It's a two-shot with Dig, and its pedal dance does massive damage to Mankey. It's not until we land a critical hit with Dig that we're able to defeat Erica. Heck, I'm not gonna complain. No need to get into the weeds on this one. That joke was for you, Oddish. After Erica, I head back to try to take on Koga once again, and I'm still having trouble. What's the trouble, you ask? Of course, it's the bulk. We get a couple of lucky critical hits in this one, and Weezing self-destructs while we're underground, so we get the win. But knowing what comes next in the Sylph Company building, I'm very concerned with how frail Mankey is. We need a chunky monkey, but we got ourselves a shrimpy chimp. And don't even get me started on Sabrina's gym. If we had that much trouble with the jugglers in Koga's gym, I don't even want to think about Sabrina. But with Koga defeated, we now have the badge to boost our speed, so we can take on the rival Bubs in the Sylph Company building. The problem, of course, is that we have no moves to modify our stats, so getting additional badge boosts is pretty difficult. Pidgeot does big damage even with the low base power wing attack, and we don't outspeed the Alakazam naturally, so our best bet is to stall for time against the Gyarados and hope for it to use Leer. The Leers give us extra badge boost to attack at speed, which let us outspeed and want to KO the Alakazam. The Venusaur was still want to KO us with Razor Leaf, so this battle just requires resets and patience. I could try to level up a ton just to beat this one battle, but I don't really want to do that. I still think that this way is better. With Bubs out of the way though, it's time to take on Giovanni once again, but I have to report that this was actually pretty difficult. And I know we're in a sorry state of affairs when Giovanni is consistently a struggle. Mankey just can't hang with the crew. And a lot of times, I can't even make it past the Kangaskhan unless it locks itself into rage, and that's no bueno. Even when we do get to the Nido Queen, there's a pretty good chance we just get mollywhomped by Body Slam. My little Mankey just can't take a friggin' hit to save its life. Brass Monkey, more like Glass Monkey. And it takes several attempts with Nido Queen repeatedly getting up close and personal with Demonkey before we can withstand her thickness long enough to squeeze out a win. Just think about baseball, Mankey. Yeah, so there's no way Sabrina's happening, so instead I take on the Volcano Vagabond Blaine, the Cinnabar Island Gym Leader. Dig is really good against his Fire-type Pokémon, but this is still bad. Growlithe will spam Agility because his AI wants to use Psychic against our Fighting-type, so that's a free KO, and Ponyta goes down easy, but Rapidash is a problem. It's able to survive a Dig and lock us with Fire Spin for a large portion of our health. And Arcanine's Fire Blast knocks out Mankey faster than a Yellow Banana turning brown. We get the win when Blaine goes for Ember instead of Fire Blast. It's not pretty, but then again, neither is a pig monkey. At this point, there's nothing left to do besides take on Sabrina, and I'm not happy about it. The problem here should be obvious. She has Psychic Pokemon, Mankey is a fighting type with bad special, so we're gonna have a bad time. I lose this battle repeatedly until Sabrina decides to regress backwards down the evolutionary chain and make the monkey-brained play of using Psywave not once, but twice. Seriously, there's no other way to characterize this one. We won because she dumb. Not out of the woods yet, though. The final gym battle with Giovanni in the Viridian City gym is a really sad affair. Yeah, I won, but only after many attempts where I utilize a pretty desperate strategy. I purposefully use the not very effective Rock Slide on his lead Rhyhorn, until I get several defense drops from Leer. Am I throwing, you ask? No, you fool! I'm trying to get those sweet additional badge boosts. For those that are unaware, every time your stats are modified in battle in this game, the stat boosts you get from badges are reapplied, meaning we get extra attack and speed. The only downside to the strategy is that it relies on Rhyhorn using Leer and then not using Fury Attack, at which point our defense is so low that monkey see, monkey go bye bye. With eight gym badges in hand, the only thing standing between us and the Elite Four is another rival battle with Bubs. 
And this is another battle where we have to utilize badge boost in order to even stand a chance. Luckily though, it's much easier this time. We knock out the Pidgeot ASAP and then fight our way through to the Growlithe while trying to take as little damage as possible. At that point, Bubs' Growlithe will only use agility, leaving us free to mimic agility and use it ourselves. This not only allows us to outspeed his Alakazam, but you know, badge boost, that old chestnut. We can't want to KO the Alakazam, but we do knock it into range for Bubs to heal. But lucky for us, he's a scrub and he's still using potions. Venusaur can end everything in a single Razor Leaf, but Vine Whip and Poison Powder are fine as long as we have enough HP left. Yeah, Mankey, I'm gonna need you to saddle up and start doing some big boy damage. All right, here are the stats going into the Elite Four. The attack and speed are pretty mid, but the rest of the stats are just awful. Mankey's stats are looking like Diddy Kong when we're gonna need a Donkey Kong to win. Up first is Lorelei, and if you've watched enough of these videos, then you already know that the goal is to get to the Slowbro so we can mimic Amnesia to raise our special while badge boosting all of our stats. Simple, right? Wrong! Dugong is easy enough to take down since it just continuously spams Rest, a psychic move that heals you while putting your Pokemon to sleep. It takes a while because Mankey's damage output is more underwhelming than Space Jam 2, but Cloyster has the highest defense stat in the game, so even our super effective rock slides barely dent its bivalve bulk. Between Supersonic causing confusion and Clamp stun locking us until we get knocked out, it takes a banana bunch of resets before I'm able to get to the Slowbro and set ourselves up. At that point, we can outspeed the Jinx and knock it out with Rock Slide. But Lapras is a 3 at KO still and confuses us to boot, opening us up to a potential Blizzard Freeze. Yay! Come on, Mankey. I really want you to be good here, but you're kind of letting me down. Oh, I get it. With all those amnesias, you forgot how to be a good Pokemon. Now it makes sense. With Lorelei defeated, it's time to take on Bruno. And this is another one of those battles where we're going to use Mimic to help us copy a move that lets us badge boost. Bruno leads off with an Onix that knows Harden. Well, that's just great. Not only can we badge boost with that, but because it only boosts a single stage of defense each time, we can use it to get six additional badge boosts instead of three like with Amnesia. Plus, it helps to improve our otherwise duty defense. All right, let's see what all these badge boosts are going to do for our attack. I bet it's going to be really good. I bet our attack stat's going to be really strong. Oh no, Mankey, what are you doing? Okay, so every other time where we don't get frozen by Ice Punch, which by the way, is in fact not a delicious tropical themed beverage, we are still struggling to beat Bruno. Bruno people, the baby Kong of trainers, y'all. Even with all the defense boosts from mimicking Harden, we just barely managed to scrape out a win. And that's only on attempts where Bruno doesn't go for submission. Why wouldn't he go for submission? I don't know. All you need to do is 11 damage, Bruno. Stop going for Fisher, you dang dip. I don't know what's wrong with you. After that surprisingly tough saga with Bruno, we have an even more frustrating battle with Agatha. And God, I love that for her. Heck, Agatha is so evil and vindictive, I'm surprised she doesn't fight with flying monkeys instead of Pokemon. Why is this battle awful, you ask? Well, while Dig is super effective against her poison Pokemon, it's a two-turn move. And because of this, Agatha has plenty of chances to switch into her Golbat, which is immune because it's a flying type. So I have to spam Rock Slide, a much weaker and also more inaccurate move, until the Golbat goes down before using Dig is just not a waste of time. Imagine someone is trying to beat you up, and while fighting back, you're blindfolded and your left leg is asleep. That's what this battle is like. I had to reset this battle so many times before we won, but you know what they say. With enough time and enough typewriters, even a room full of monkeys will eventually write the works of Shakespeare. That's nice and all, but what I want to know is, who's going to clean the walls? Next up is the final Elite Four member, Lance. I pop a rare candy just to reset our experience and try to delay leveling up during the battle as long as possible since we're going to be setting up additional badge boosts and those will all get reset if we level up during the battle. If you've seen my videos before, you already know that since Mankey is a fighting type, Lance's Dragonairs and Dragonite won't be able to damage us, so really it's just a battle between Gyarados and Aerodactyl. And honestly, Gyarados is the biggest issue here. Its Hydro Pump does massive damage and we kind of need that not to happen. Also, Wet Monkey? Just think of the smell. Ugh. Once his first Dragonair comes out, we copy Agility and use those bad boys to badge boost. 
And with this, we'll outspeed the Aerodactyl, but we still can't want a KO, so it does have a chance to critical hit a take down our Hyper Beam for the knockout. But once it goes down, the battle's basically over. Dragonite flounders around, spamming barrier and agility, which don't deal damage, so just a matter of time before we win. Finally, it's time to take on the champion, our rival Bubs. And unlike the last battle where we used one rare candy to reset our experience, I have to use all of them here. Why? For the levels, of course. Well, that was a silly question. Why would you even ask it? Mankey just can't handle Bubs at that lower level, and I should know. I tried dozens of times at each level, and in hindsight, I should have just used all the rare candies right away. But I really do try to beat the game at the minimum level possible, so I guess that's what I get for trying. The strategy here, if you can even call it that, is that we need to mimic Sky Attack from the Pidgeot without taking a Sky Attack in return. Heck, we can hardly afford to take a Wing Attack. Then, we need to knock out Alakazam, which means it can't go for either Psybeam or Psychic, both of which will want to KO us if we've taken a Wing Attack. And all of this takes an incredible amount of Primate Patience and Simeon Serenity, plus dozens of resets. And even after all of that, there's still a Rhydon, Gyarados, and Arcanine that are more than happy to kick the crap out of us. And even after all of that, there's still a Venusaur, and from everything I've seen, there is no way to get to this point and survive a Razor Leaf. Sky Attack will let us 1 a KO, but only if we don't get knocked out the turn we're charging. It took dozens of resets, just at this highest level alone, before we could win, and that's only because most of his team never dealt damage, his Venusaur went for Solar Beam, and Alakazam got the incredibly lucky 1 in 256 chance to miss on Psychic. Jeez, normally you'd have to wish on a monkey paw for that kind of luck. And with that, the challenge is over. Honestly, if you wanted this to be more consistent, you'd probably have to level up Mankey to a much higher level before the champion isn't so, you know, luck-based. But guess what, y'all? This isn't a science experiment. This is out. I'll take what I can get. And as always, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. These videos are a lot of fun, but also a lot of work, so I really do appreciate it. There's a playlist on my channel where you can find the rest of my Pokemon challenge videos if you want to check those out as well. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you'll know right away the next time one of these episodes is uploaded. And let me know in the comments what other Pokemon you want to see, and I'll probably do it. We're headed back to Johto for the next two weeks, so next week, we're going to find out if we can beat Pokemon Crystal using only one Dunsparce. It starts off with only Rage. Should be fun. Anyways, until next time... <laughs>